Hi, my name is Peter Larson. I'm a professor and radio, uh, MRI researcher. And here is my brief introduction to how MRI works. So what is MRI? MRI is what we call a cross-sectional biomedical imaging modality. So it means basically we can take pictures through your body in all different directions of any part of your anatomy. And the advantage of MRI is it really provides this exceptional structural and anatomic contrast. You can see lots of different features like are shown in the image examples here. Um, and we also can image information about tissue, tissue function like brain activity, which is also known as fMRI, uh, blood flow, and even tissue motion and mechanics. So what are we measuring in MRI? What is the source of our signal? And all of our signal comes from hydrogen atoms. The body, they are 80% of the atoms in our body, and they are found primarily in water molecules, H2O, which, as you know, makes up a huge, large percentage of your body. And the hydrogen nuclei have this property called spin. This is a physics phenomenon at the nuclear level. And what it means is basically these hydrogen act like tiny uh, magnets. So they can create their own, albeit small, magnetic field. And they're also going to interact with other magnetic fields that are around them. OK, so in an MRI, we need a large magnet. Why is this? If we have no magnetic field, our hydrogen nuclear spins are completely randomly aligned, as you can see in the bottom left picture here, where the turquoise arrows indicate the direction that all these tiny magnet-like spins are pointing. But if we apply an external magnetic field, these nuclear spins have a slight preference to align with this magnetic field. And this is illustrated in the bottom right uh, picture, where now these blue uh, turquoise arrows are slightly pointed up and actually the average of them is the larger blue arrow sticking out of the top which indicates that and we have the slight clustering a slight preference for these spins to point along the direction of the magnetic field and this is a process we call polarization now the reason we need such large magnets in MRI is this preference for alignment with the external magnet magnetic field is only a slight preference Okay, the next part of MRI is magnetic resonance. What does resonance mean? The resonance phenomena is this process where the hydrogen nuclear spins are going to rotate in the presence of a magnetic field, illustrated now again in the top right plot where each uh, small turquoise arrow there represents a nuclear spin that is rotating around the direction of the external magnetic field. And it is this rotation that actually creates our signal in MRI. This is going to be illustrated in the bottom right uh, diagram there, where the, the white arrow with M represents a rotating magnet. And this creates a fluctuating magnetic field indicated by the yellow uh, arrow inside of the circle there. And it turns out fluctuations in magnetic fields are actually very easy to measure they'll create electronic, electric currents in an antenna. And what, what we call the antenna in MRI is an RF coil. Now, before we can receive signal with MRI, we need to do something called resonance excitation. Because if you or I were just to go into a magnet, there actually be no measurable MRI signal. To get the signal, we must first excite our hydrogen nuclear spins. And to do this, we send a radio frequency wave into the body. And we call this a radio frequency wave because the frequencies of this wave that we use are around 100 megahertz and uh, similar to the frequencies of FM radio. And what this radio frequency excitation allows is for these hydrogen nuclear spins to rotate and actually create their own radio frequency waves 
that then we can measure. And this forms the basis of the MRI signal. So we're sending in radio frequency energy, and that is then radio frequency energy is coming back out. What about imaging? So far, all of our hydrogen nuclear spins are rotating at the same frequency because the frequency they rotate at is proportional to the magnetic field. So, so far, all I've said is we get one big magnet. If we do excitation, we're only going to measure a single frequency. Now, the trick to doing imaging is we actually are going to vary the magnetic field across the body, creating what we call a magnetic field gradient, illustrated by the size of the blue arrows in this picture. So now that what this does is since the rotation frequency is proportional to the magnetic field, different locations that have different magnetic fields, therefore have different frequencies they rotate at. And these different frequencies show up in the MRI signal as these different patterns of oscillation shown by the blue, green, and red curves at the far right. And we can, when we receive these signals, we can separate them and figure out exactly where our signals came from and create an image. Okay, to summarize, I want to show what all is inside of an MRI system. So the majority of the real estate inside an MRI scanner is devoted to the magnet. The purpose of the magnet is to polarize or align our hydrogen spins uh, in a large magnetic field. So we need a lot of, uh, we need to create a very large magnetic field. Then we have uh, sets of radio frequency coils, which are antennas. And their purpose is twofold. One is to send in the radio frequency waves to excite our spins. And the other is to receive the radio frequency waves that come after that from these rotating spins. And then finally, we have our gradient coils. And the purpose of these is for imaging. They are going to vary the magnetic field across the body, create those different uh, frequencies that we can then separate from our MRI signal to create an image. Okay, to summarize, here's the picture of our MRI experiment. First, we have polarization. We're gonna send our subject into a large magnet and it's gonna cause our hydrogen nuclear spins that are mostly in water to slightly align with the magnetic field. We're gonna send in some radio frequency wave into the body in the process called excitation. And this is gonna cause our hydrogen to rotate or resonate in the magnetic field. Then we receive our signal, and this signal comes from this rotation of the hydrogen nuclear spins. Their rotation of these basically tiny magnets creates fluctuations in the magnetic field, and we can turn these into electric currents in our RF coils or our antenna. Finally, to perform imaging, we need to slightly vary the magnetic field across the body using what we call magnetic field gradients. And then we get to this point where the hydrogen nuclear spins at different locations will rotate at different frequencies, allowing us to create an image. So thank you very much for watching. Here are a few of my uh, favorite other resources for learning more about MRI.